Gustavo married Dr. Morton and he um, accrued her wealth, whatever it is that she had, even though she wasn't mentioned at all in um, either her sons or her her son George Savile or her um, her husband George Savile's wills, whatever it is wealth that she had must have enabled him to buy this um, Montague house and they renamed it to the Savile House. And it's still mentioned in a later um, book about Twickingham that's also available at Google Books. But at the age of 61, Lady Savile would have been too old to be the mother of Charles Carl Morton. Now, Dr. Morton's third known marriage was to Elizabeth Pratt, who was said to have been age 35 at the time, according to the Scott magazine, if I remember right. It also took place at St. George Bloomsbury, and it took place on April 25th, 1791, a month and two weeks after Lady Savile died. And Elizabeth Pratt was the daughter of Reverend Joseph Pratt and a near relation to Lady Savile. As such, she lived in the same household as Dr. Morton and his wife Mary Pratt from as early as January 6, 1778. This is evidenced both by her wedding announcement in the Scott Magazine and also by the summary of a letter now in the Nottingham Archives, which says, quote, note from Eliza Pratt sending Lady Savile's compliments to Mr. Hewitt. And again, that is, Hewitt is one of Lady Savile's um, daughters, Arabella's husband. Um, she would be much obliged to him if he invites Dr. Morton to dine at Grosvenor Street next Saturday. In another document the Nottingham Archives, Eliza Pratt writes, Dr. Morton intends putting him, which would be Charles Carr, to Mr. Angelo's to ride and fence, but he's not to go into the guards, which seems implied to indicate that uh, Charles Carr Morton was anywhere from 16 to 18 years old in 1779 when it was written, hadn't been born anywhere from 1760 to 1763, six years after Mary Berkeley died, but four years prior to his marriage to Lee Savile. Now, there is a 10-year gap where he could have had another wife. We just don't know about it. Now, even though Burke's Landed Gentry identifies Elizabeth Pratt as Charles Carr Morton's mother, um, and she was 35 years old when she married Dr. Morton in 1791, and therefore, you know, biologically could have been the mother, the problem is, is that Charles Carr Morton was married only eight years after Dr. Morton and Elizabeth Pratt's marriage, and that was on May 1st, 1799, a few months after Dr. Morton died, and that was between Charles Carr Morton and Charlotte Tatlow, and that took place at uh, Dromora Lodge in Cavan Count County, County, Ireland. And then uh, by January 5th, 1800, Charles Carr Morton was the father of his first child, Anna. So uh, a, a nine-year-old boy isn't going to be fathering a, his first daughter. Now, during his life, Charles Morton published two large publications, uh, one of which was Sir Bulstrode Whitlock's Journal of the Swedish Embassy from 1653 to 1654, and also Notes Upon the King Writ. <coughs> King's Writ. He was Secretary of the Royal Society and a member of the Academy of St. Petersburg, and he died at the museum on February 10, 1799. <clears throat> now, um, a little bit more detail that I found here recently. This here actually is a printout of a letter between um, from Captain Cook. Yeah, the James Captain Cook that discovered Australia. Uh, between him and Dr. Morton, and basically what was happening is there is an event that take there is an event that takes place every so often. You find that article somewhere here. It is called the Transit of Venus. Got this right. It's called the Transit of Venus. And Dr. Morton, as the both the secretary of the Royal Society and the principal librarian at the British Museum, the, there was basically a a, um, a petition that was sent out to Parliament to obtain some monies to have people that were 
um, planning to do voyages down either near the Cape of Good Hope or wherever they happen to be going and exploring to use some um, instruments to uh, basically track the transit of Venus. And what the transit of Venus is, in, just to put it in layman's terms, it's almost like a, an eclipse, but as much of an eclipse that it can be given that it's Venus and Venus is so far away. And it happens every 243 years according to this article. And this letter is basically from Captain Cook back to Dr. Morton at the, at the museum to tell Dr. Morton what was going on when he was trying to collect the information. There's a whole series of letters that are in the archives of the Royal Society of England. And the Royal Society is basically a group of people that um, are learned individuals that try to advance scientific knowledge for, for, for the world, basically, and they do it for the pride of the, the, the country of England itself. Um, Dr. Morton, while he was at the museum, and of the um, articles that I've seen in the Gentleman's Magazine or, or Annual Register of publications that are like that, I've seen him take accounts of a whole wide variety of subjects that other people have had their experiences with and they've added to the body of human knowledge, you take those accounts and you get them published at least in the annual register. So Dr. Morton was a behind the scenes person that would coordinate basically the gathering of new and important scientific information and help make that happen and help make a record of it seems to me that's what he did amongst also um, pub running the entire museum and publishing a bunch of uh, a bunch of these historical manuscripts by both Grove and Whitlock. Okay, I'm going to stop and then I'll pick up maybe more of some genealogical stuff and I think when I'm doing the genealogical stuff maybe other important little tidbits will come up. But before I get into the gene genealogical stuff, I actually remember now that I could read a few items from the passage of John Tatlow's memoirs to add a little bit more of character to uh, uh, Dr. Charles Morton's um, life.